Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to do recursion. So recursion is when you have a function that calls itself, you can do direct and indirect recursion. Direct is well a function that directly calls itself. Indirect, which is what we're going to be doing, is a function that calls another function, which calls the previous function that it calls. So the benefit of this is maybe you need to repeat a process again and again but you don't know how many times you're going to have to repeat that process so basically that process could be encapsulated within a function and depending on how many times you need to repeat it you could call itself that many times we're going to use the example of factorial so what a factorial is so if we do factorial three which is that's the way you write the exclamation mark three it results in six so what it is it's just the number times by the number minus one times by that minus one till you get to one which obviously gives us six and that's all factorial is that's literally it okay so we are first of all actually if you haven't watched the videos on functions or some from the previous ones on variables all that stuff make sure you watch them because i'm going to be you know using a lot of that code in here so what we're going to do is say we're going to have section dot data so we're going to create some constants and this is going to be a message that we are going to print out once we've calculated it. This is going to say factorial of the number 3 equals and this is what's going to get printed out. And I'm going to dynamically calculate the message length. The message length is eq dollar dash message like so okay so next of all we need to create a variable and in here we're going to call it fact you know short for factorial res b and yeah we can just allocate one eight eight one byte or eight bits should suffice for what we need it for and then in the starting section this is where it's going to end basically we are going to say we move into the bx register free we're going to call process factorial this is a method that we haven't created yet let me finish the main body of it and then i'll create that as well i'm going to add to the ax 38 and then we're going to move into the factorial variable or fact you know a x basically so now what we're going to say is move into the eax because we are going to print some text out for Then move into the EBX register one. So this is you know for output, and then into the ECX register we are going to move the message. Let's look the size then message, and then move into the EDX register the length of the message. So message length that we calculated right here. And now we're going to say int eighty hey So we're calling the kernel. We're going to do something very similar to this. Paste that out. And here, instead of message len or, or message, we're going to have to print out the factorial, you know, the result that has been calculated. And apart from that, that's all done. Now we can actually get on to implementing the two methods. So the first one is process factorial, which is called right here. Again, if you don't understand any of this, recommend that you watch the previous video because a lot of this is covered in there. And we're going to compare BL with 1. So that's basically what we want to get it down to. So we're going to use a conditional jump of JG. Again, I cover this in conditional jump video, so feel free to check that out. I'm going to say calculate. This is another method I'm going to call it. I'm creating in a second. I'm going to move into the AX register 1. And then we'll return. So in calculate, you're going to decrement BL. BL. So because obviously if we have the number three, we want it to go down one by one and then multiply it essentially. So we're going to say call process factorial. So this will call this method again. And if it basically hasn't reached one yet, then you will call the calculate, which you know decreases it by one and what we do is we increase bl and we multiply it by bl as well so we return 
and now we should be ready to go okay 45 45 I'll put integer or int instead of increment there we go factorial the number three is six because remember three times by one minus it times by one minus that until you get to one is six so that is how you create a recursive application or you know implement recursion using functions so you can calculate factorial obviously you can adapt this to any sort of recursive implementation that you need but it's that simple if you have any questions feel free to pop me a message and as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next video